both this pressure is into announcing projects. This is projects. crazy. Yeah, they had to announce projects that were nowhere near ready. That's when Armor Wars was announced as a series. They also announced Fantastic Four back then. Think about that. We've known about Fantastic Four now, since 2020. Welcome back to the break room. <laughs> I'm John Costa. This is Evan Yee. We're producers. We're not on screen talent, but everyone f***ed off. So it's just us today. And we want to get real nerdy in industry and discuss some of the really interesting details from MCU The Reign of Marvel Studios, which is a novel. Um, it is all fiction. Mm -hmm. Wait. Written in a, no, it's, it's all a, fiction. It is, a non, it is a non fiction book. It is not a novel. Um, Joanna Robinson of the Ringer, Dave Gonzalez of, couldn't tell you, Gavin Edwards, don't know his outlet either, put this book together. Mm -hmm. It uh, chronicles the beginning and the end of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Actually, when I did my big Marvel rewatch right before WandaVision, I wanted to rewatch everything uh, leading up to WandaVision, I watched it in an order that Dave Gonzalez shared on Polygon. Now, he what is the change? So the really interesting thing is that you start with um, Incredible Hulk. Start with Hulk. episode one. You start with episode one. <laughs> uh, no, you start with Incredible and Hulk and Iron Man one, and you watch Doctor Strange like really, really early. It's really odd. It's like the way he set it up was that you wanted to get, he wanted you to like feel like you're being introduced to the concept of all the Infinity Stones a little bit sooner. Oh, that's interesting. So obviously there's a Time Stone, and yeah, it was pretty interesting to watch it that way, and I also hadn't watched Thor The Dark World and something else I had missed, so it was cool to finally have done like the full gauntlet. I have a confession. Yes. I've never seen Thor The Dark World. I've worked here for four years. I've never seen that film. It came out before I started working here. Oh. I went to go see it in theaters once. Um, <laughs> and it was like one of those days where I was a youth, so I would go mm. see a movie and then sneak into another movie. So, uh, The Dark World was a, the movie that I was sneaking into. Oh. And I lasted maybe 20 minutes and decided, <laughs> you know what, I didn't pay for this, I'm just gonna take off. <laughs> and I have not finished it. I, I know what happens. Yeah. I mean, I do like the intro of that film, but like the I rest... did it. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, uh, you know, sometimes we do these videos, not sometimes, all the time. We do these videos live on Twitch, 3 p.m. most weekdays, uh, and we hit a sub goal. Uh, thanks to Christian Unpronounceable Whoa. for hitting us, getting us to our sub goal of 285 subs. Uh, I'm not going to change the goal, but yeah, record high. Thanks so much. Um, should we do something for the sub goal? I'll take my pants off. No, don't take your pants off. In the meantime. In the meantime. Let's talk about this book. And more specifically, the Marvel Cinematic Universe and some interesting stuff that has happened. Okay. Yeah. Starting us off. Ba -ba -ba -ba. This book was not made with Disney's involvement. The writer spoke to over 100 people, including Kevin Feige and Chadwick Boseman, before Chadwick Boseman passed away. Or they talked to his ghost. We'll never know. Marvel was making their own sort of version of this book, um, and then these three authors just kind of sniped them. If, if, if we say it's like without Marvel's involvement, and yet Kevin Feige was giving quotes, so like yeah, it's kind of I. It's like one of these like unofficial, right? But basically, so many people like have quotes and you know are talked about in this that it's hard to imagine that like. Disney, you know, it's one of those things like, right, if someone says something bad about you and you sue them for libel, it's like, do you just like look more guilty, you know? That's a good point. Look, I've read a lot of this book. I'm on page one. <laughs> that, was we, we, that was not a bit, I'm genuinely on page one. I saw you sitting in your office the other day reading it. So you know, there's a little front part oh, with a timeline boy. and some info. Okay, so to clarify, um, John has read a little bit of the book. Um, there's been a lot of reporting on the book, and Joanna Robinson, one of the um, writers, has also done a lot of interviews, as well as uh, she was on the podcast The Watch, which is from The Ringer, where she talked about the process of the book, as well as some of like her conclusions about like what will happen in the future, and some other things that maybe didn't make it in the book as well. And so we were kind of like compiled all these details to talk about today. Yeah, and yeah, so we were trying to do this on yesterday's show. It, it went off the rails. Check yeah. it out if you haven't seen it already. That's why Evan and I have to step in to save the day. And here's the thing. This episode's already off the rails too, so that's on me. That's my <laughs> fault. All right, 
let's rein it in. Let's get to it. They were talking about some casting stuff uh, yesterday on yesterday's episode of the Break Room. Sean Levy, Levy mm-hmm. doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> tweeted like a I can neither confirm nor deny type of tweet when it comes to yeah. Taylor Swift being in Deadpool three. Mm-hmm. I just want an end credit song. Oh, I'm, that's pretty funny. Yeah. Just like a real fuck you. And, and you know, they could shoot something for it. Yeah. I don't mind. I bet, yeah, because you could do it as Deadpool being just like, and hey, Dazzler, take it away. And then it just cuts over, and that would be, I, I would mean. Leave. I would leave. <laughs> hey, Dazzler. Because <laughs> um, what the fuck is Dazzler going to do in Deadpool 3? They were talking about some of that casting. We're going to talk about some alt casting um, from the early uh parts of the MCU, including Cobb Vanth himself, <laughs> Timothy Oliphant, <laughs> Vanth, he was almost Iron Man. Now there's a lot of, there, a lot of people have been saying like Tom Cruise mm. was almost Iron Man. I, I don't know if that's true or not. I did have it from like a good source before, this is, doesn't matter anymore, <laughs> uh, before Multiverse of Madness was coming out, everyone mm. was like, yeah, and fucking Tom Cruise is going to show up as Iron Man. And right. I had a, I had my, my a, a couple of people being like, <clears throat> I didn't even know that was a thing because that was like before I was working here. Mm. I was still very into Marvel, but I like wasn't following the rumors as much. Here's my problem. When was the last time you saw Tony Stark run? Oh yeah. That dude flies. He flies. I, I don't want Tom Cruise flying. Yeah, we can't Although, have it. You know, pretty good in Top Gun. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> this, this was interesting that you kind of wanted to to bring up too. In the Star Wars oh, yeah. world, we sort of have like, um, and I suppose in like our world, we have, you know, BCE or BC and AD if yeah. you're a uh, Christian, um, which is how I was raised. <laughs> um, before the Christian era, after the Christian, after the Christian era. era, some Jesus <laughs> stuff. That's how we get years, people. Um, and Star Wars has a sim- similar thing with the Battle of Yavin. There's BBY, yeah. ABY. And I guess internally at Marvel, they also were sort of operating with a similar uh, zero point, is what they were calling it for the Marvel timeline, which is basically like th- uh, the world before an event happened versus the world after an event happened. And, and that was just sort of like Tony Stark doing the like I am Iron Man thing that he does at the yeah. end of the movie. Which is so funny because like if you think early days in Marvel and you're like using that as the event where things happen what is happening before and after? No love for the like, fucking Eternals. <laughs> I mean, all right, Brad. But but Eternals probably happened so much further down the line, right? Fastos killed a bunch of people with an atom bomb. <laughs> no, no, I'm saying like in the development of. And like, then he had the these... nerve to cry. <laughs> the nerve. I mean, I just think it's really interesting to use that as a thing because out of the movies that were coming out around Iron Man. It's just like the span of one or two years of like, this would have happened one year before he said it or the same year that he said he was Iron Man, right? As opposed to like other, like Eternals obviously happened so far in the past, but what else is happening in the past? Just Captain America around World War II. And then everything else is like within around like one or two years. It's not like a big, like overarching thing, event of years yet, you know? Right. It's we, like we all we want were, them to come together. We were talking, uh, if they were doing it now, it would probably be around the snap or the blip. Yeah. Is probably when they would set this. But you, you'd think it would be like when Thor shows up on Earth. Because like, yeah. I, I am Iron Man, I get it. That's like before there were no superheroes, now there are superheroes. But yeah. like at the end of the day, Tony Stark's still a dude <clears throat> in a suit. So, yeah. uh, I, you know. I'm surprised it wasn't until like they were like, oh, that's a god. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah, exactly. And GSU Eagle in the chat pointing out Captain Marvel happening in the 90s but never mentioned. Yeah. Right? That's big. I mean, yeah, also... It's almost like they uh, were making this film franchise and didn't know exactly what was going to happen throughout <laughs> all of history. That's something I did leave out of the script when I was preparing this yesterday, is that um, basically like all of the... Infinity Saga was like way less planned out than people think it was. Like yeah. the way that like oh we promised the ether was an Infinity Stone the whole time. Yeah, yeah, it's very interesting the way that that stuff has all come together. See, I saw Thor: The Dark World. I <laughs> uh, just want to get through some chat questions real quick here. HD guy asking, how do you guys feel about Larson possibly leaving the MCU? 
I hadn't heard that. Yeah, I haven't heard that either. Uh, we'll get to a little bit of that and her future in the MCU in, in a little bit because there's some interesting stuff around that. Um, GSU... One thing we were saying in office, it, I, we you know, it's sort of dangerous territory to tread into like Brie Larson stuff because the internet's disgusting. Uh, but we were saying internally, like we all really like Brie Larson as uh, Captain Marvel, but mm -hmm. the first movie is not good. Yeah, it's kind of rough. Um, I do. I will say I rewatched it almost in full, and I did enjoy it. Oh, okay. But it's better a second time. Better a third time. Oh. <laughs> okay. Well, if you had if you had the fucking patience to watch that movie three times, then you must like it. Um, I like certain parts of it. It just feels like pretty uh, inconsistent. But I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, there's some good stuff in there. Uh, the emotional moment at the end is a really good beat, but I don't know if it was earned. And I'll stop talking about it now. One other question I want to get here is um, uh, GSU Eagle again asking, "Do you think moving forward the MCU will keep more villains alive?" That's interesting. I feel like they probably at this point now as we've seen in the most recent movies they want to keep the door open as much as possible right like the high evolutionary is still being alive and the, the deleted scenes um i think it's like how many doors can we keep open for people to come back if we need them as they are not a variant or like a multiverse version of themselves i don't know it's interesting because because when you're making a movie you don't know and we'll get into this a little bit in this conversation. You don't necessarily know what's going to work and what's not going to work. Yeah. You're so in it mm -hmm. that it's like really hard to tell what you still like and what you don't like. Or if yeah. you don't like it just because you've seen it a million times. Um, I mean, that was a great tidbit too, right? From This is later in the script. We'll hit it again. But like, the, you, I'm sure everyone has seen it. The people in Disney and Marvel thought Quantumania right. was good when right. it was released, that was and it's not that bad. Like when John and I left the movie, we saw it together. We were like, it's not that bad. It, like as bad as the early, you know, kind of like buzz around it was. But they thought it yeah, was good. Yeah, <laughs> they thought they had a big hit. Yeah, yeah. And you know, John Majors is really good in that movie. There's like a couple of weird things that happen, and they redid the ending, which I think like probably made it a weaker film, but. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, that's the curse and the blessing of the MCU is that they have to redo the endings of movies yeah. that don't serve the story of the movie, but they serve the story of, like, the next The movie. next thing, right. Like, so, yeah. you know, it's stuff that, like, matters to us and we all end up liking, but also kind of hurts the individual films, I think. Like, how much better would, like, would kind of forever have been if it was like a tighter film and didn't have to introduce like both didn't have any right. of the Val elements right. in it. I mean, like uh, having Ironheart in it is was great. She was like really really fun in the movie. But if also you take like, her out, nothing changes. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I agree. I agree. The the thing that I said when I we walked out of Wakanda Forever was like it felt like Ryan Coogler had a bunch of homework to do, and he aced yeah. his homework, but yeah. he still had like a bunch of homework. Mm -hmm. um, which, you know, kind of felt shitty. <laughs> um, we're working on a video at New Rockstars that's probably not going to come out for like six months, but we're still working on it. All about Edgar Wright's version of Ant-Man. Whoa. Um, I think it's a really interesting story because he had Ant-Man set up at a production company that's name escapes me right now that owned the rights to the character, and this was before Marvel Studios. This was before... Um, Marvel Entertainment, which I think is like the blanket company now. Uh, back in the days when like Marvel wasn't doing so hot, they were selling all of their the rights to a bunch of different weird companies. Ant Man being a smaller character, it's not a pun. Um, <laughs> you know, went to like a, a relatively small production company that Edgar Wright was working with, and then that production company just got bought by Disney or, or Marvel Entertainment or whoever it was, and so they brought that project sort of into um, Marvel, and Ant-Man was gonna be one of the original Avengers. Mm. He was gonna be, um, you know, one of those one of those OGs, they were gonna try to put that movie out around the same time they were putting out Thor and, and The Incredible Hulk and, and that kind of stuff. And I think what happened was, and I didn't realize this part of the story, and maybe I'm getting my timeline a little bit incorrect here, but it, no, I think this is what happened. Uh, Edgar Wright's producing partner had was was like getting sick, and 
he was the producer on Shaun of the Dead and on uh, Hot Fuzz. Mm. And they wanted to do this Cornetto trilogy together. And so Edgar Wright was sort of like, hey, I'm going to step away from Ant-Man and the development of Ant-Man for a minute. I'm going to go make this the world what ended up being the world's end oh yeah um and by the time he came back to marvel like the mcu was sort of rolling and everything was a little bit more interconnected and the reason that the split kind of happened was you know there's there was like talk at the time about creative differences and i think that's still true but the more specific um aspect of it was marvel hired a different writer uh, Edgar Wright was writing it with, with a co-writer and then um, it sounded like the studio was giving them notes and they were saying like we're not going to take your notes yeah. so they hired an in-house writer to just like change the script to be the script that Marvel wanted it to be and and I think Edgar Wright was sort of like oh that makes this feel less like my movie and more of like yeah. you're just hiring me to direct your movie and, and that was sort of why he stepped off of that project. Yeah, I think some of from the book they kind of like detailed that where it was like because Ant Man was never like a priority, it kept getting moved around as well, like in the timeline and and how connected it needed to be. And once right. they realized, like you said, that they were going to move it together, like I think Edgar Wright and whoever he was writing with were trying to get all these like Easter eggs, these references to work, and he just didn't know how to do it. And so when they hired that in house writer, it was kind of like a slight, you know. But like, here's the interesting part. The, the scene that sticks out to me is when Scott goes to like Avengers Campus or, or whatever, he's trying to sneak in. I don't, I haven't seen Ant-Man in a long time. I don't know exactly why. He's getting a tech thing and he gets caught by Falcon or something like that. Um, that was always the one scene where I was like, and that was the scene Marvel wanted and Edgar Wright said no, but apparently not exactly the case. Yeah. Um, two interesting details um, uh, from this book one is that the role of Luis was like mega expanded in the film he was like mm. a really small character in um the original Edgar Wright draft and maybe that's something that just changed while they were in production because yeah. they were like well Michael Pena is doing a great job with this character and we're really enjoying that's it true. let's yeah, just yeah, give yeah. him more stuff the other one was Hope was like a, a, a really a non-factor and they really yeah. built that character out and I think that you can kind of see Marvel's thinking in you know how they titled the sequel Ant Man and the Wasp. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. They were like, no, 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 we want this to kind of be a two hander. Even yeah. though it hasn't really ever been, but you know, whatever. Yeah. Patrick Wilson is Yellow Jacket. We were talking about this yesterday. What's the difference? Yeah. Corey stole Patrick Wilson. I think he's definitely a little bit more like intense. Uh, I'm, I'm Maybe I'm just picturing Patrick Wilson from. There's a ghost in the house! Is that what it is? Yeah, I've actually I've only seen, ever seen I've, The Conjuring. I've only ever seen Aquaman. That's the only movie I've ever seen in my entire life. I'm a big Patrick Wilson fan. Um, yeah, he would have just been like a, maybe a little bit more menacing. But Corey still does turn it on towards the end there. Here's like the when thing. he's starting to get like mind fried. I've seen Patrick Wilson's ass and it is not as good as Corey Stoll's. Full stop. All right, moving on. Uh, connections with Marvel Television. So Ike Perlmutter was kind of like heading up Marvel Television while Feige was doing all the film stuff. And so this is back in the day with like the Defenders stuff on Netflix as well as Inhumans. And, I've, you know, there's been a lot of bad like blood between the two of them. And I think um, Kevin Feige really wanted to minimize the connections to that as much as possible. So I think that probably goes to show why Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. like tried to connect and how it's been messy and not really like brought into the fold as much. Uh, but one fun tidbit that was highlighted was that um, the Eternals creators were told that none of it could take place in Hawaii to risk reminding audiences of Inhumans. To which wow. I say, who would have remembered in you? Oh my gosh. How rude. <laughs> As we saw in Multiverse of Madness, they brought back the same actor who played Black Bolt, you know, to play that character again. And um, Kevin Feige, apparently, everyone in MCU history with television, with the television shows included, like, everyone is on his, like, call list in the Rolodex, except Edward Norton and Joss Whedon. <laughs> <laughs> it's very funny. <laughs> I have some great stories about Edward Norton. If you ever um, come find me in person, I will talk about them at length. Whoa! Next um, time at the at the next New Rockstars live event. My good, uh, uh, two of my good friends worked on Glass Onion, oh. and had dinner uh, with Edward Norton, and uh, it was very interesting. Oh, interesting! Yeah, come find me. 
Um, uh, yeah, no, the Ike Perlmutter thing is so bad that literally in this book's like timeline, there's a thing that says like August 31st, 2015, Kevin Feige, Feige no longer reports to Ike Perlmutter. Like that's how, that's how bad it was. And, and like some of the reporting that came out years and years ago was that like Ike Perlmutter was the person who basically was like, we want white men only to be our superheroes because no one wants to see people of color in superhero movies and no one wants to see women in superhero movies. Yeah, so they don't you get... They don't like, push plastic. They don't sell toys. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why you get Black Widow being introduced in Iron Man 2 and sort of being a background character until, you know, Kevin Feige says, like, okay, let's give her her movie and let's, like, make her a more prominent person. She's, like, pretty prominent in, um, in Endgame. Yeah. Et cetera. And then she dies. And then she dies. All right, Pete. Uh, but they could bring her back. Another fun detail from the Joanna Robinson um, podcast interview was that Hawkeye was supposed to be a movie, which makes sense to me when you look at like the story. What does that mean? Yeah, because this, as we know, one of the producers, I think Stephen Broussard was the one who said that we don't want to do movies on Disney Plus. So Hawkeye would have been developed during the time that, you know, the streaming content was there was like about to be a big push. Who? Oh, and they were just sort of like, there were projects in development, and yeah. maybe they, there was like a meeting where they were like, hey, we've got a bunch of stuff, mm -hmm. cook it. What other shit can we turn into a six episode series and don't count on Disney Plus? Yeah. Probably yeah. is how that went. But would that have done well? You're saying who wants to see a Hawkeye movie? I want to see that. Listen, I was here, I was up at midnight, I was watching every single Hawkeye episode. I love Hawkeye, the series. I haven't watched it again, but I love it. Um, but would it have done well in theaters, like from what we saw, you know? And would have any any of the other Disney Plus stuff, right? Have they been theatrical releases as a movie, uh, which I think the majority of series that we got could have been movies? Would they have done better in theaters than you know, ostensibly better on streaming? I'd watch the shit out of a Loki movie. Yeah, Loki personally. movie would be great. Yeah. Um, well, the, the problem is that a lot of the series have not lived up to what we expect from Marvel theatrical releases. That's so it's true. hard to kind of say, you know, oh yeah, Falcon and the Winter Soldier would have killed in this movie. Because like, while there's a lot of good stuff in that show, it doesn't quite live up to yeah. some of the other Captain America movies that we've seen, right? Yeah. Um, hey, we're at a big old desk here. And I actually want... Um, you to know that Evan doesn't live on this desk. He lives behind a desk, and that desk is Flexi. We want to give a quick shout out to our favorite piece of break room furniture, the Flexi desk from Flex. Oh, there's B roll. There's B roll. Whoa! So this is the clip. Uh, Look at of Evan. Me. Yeah, this is really pro. This is when I. This is like the day after I got this short ass haircut, and I was so upset about it because I was like, I you knew like I had it? to film this. I knew I had to film this. Anyways, this Flexi desk is a standing desk that has a motor that lets you transition from 28 inches to 47 inches with the press of a button. We've got their calm hard design in our studio, so we can go from sitting to standing and back to sitting quickly and easily. Hey, I, why does the copy say we when it's only you? Uh, it's a collective desk. Anyway, I've seen other people sit at it. Okay. Uh, the four programmable height presets let multiple people <laughs> save, folks save their preferred height and get back to it with a touch of a button. It's got integrated USB <laughs> ports. <laughs> You're like the little kid with the internet. <laughs> oh, that's, that's what I was channeling. That's what I was channeling when I did that. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> that's amazing. Um... <laughs> Anyways, yeah, it's got integrated USB ports to let you have fewer dangling cords, an industrial grade steel frame that can support up to 110 pounds. There's also a convenient pull-out drawer for office supplies. We use it for snacks, but it's really for office supplies. This is a fun, this is true fact that I have the gum that from those old cards is just sitting in that drawer. Snacks. And every time I open it up, I'm like, that's a snack. Now here's the problem. I was raiding your desk drawer for snacks. I actually I ate a pencil and now I have to go to the hospital. So are you gonna pay for that or am I gonna pay? Um, I'll pay for it and I'll submit an expense report. Smart. Hey, Flexi Desk's quick install design lets you get up and running in less than five minutes. It, it is really easy to set up actually for a standing desk. When we got it, I initially was like very overwhelmed, but as soon that as I pulled it out. That desk sat in the corner for <laughs> weeks. For weeks. Okay. It did sit there for a long time until Zach said, okay, Evan, you can have the desk. You, and you know what? Click the link in the description below to get a flexi desk today because here's here's the problem. For the longest time, um, Evan was on like a crappy Costco rubber made this is table. 
this that is you, true that you would see in a Bills tailgate. Okay, and Evan's better than that. Here's my favorite part about Evan having a standing desk. Mm -hmm. He now has to find taller chairs <laughs> uh, because he doesn't just lower the desk. <laughs> he just finds a tall chair. And continues to sit high. No, well, listen, I there love... There's a stool there right now. People in the Twitch chat know, if you're on YouTube, you, uh, join us on Twitch because you would know all of these fun facts about myself. <laughs> but people in the Twitch chat know that I love standing. Like, sitting right now is destroying me. So I love standing... Um, <laughs> just you can't, you can't move from the mic. So I love standing, and I'm often standing during the show. Because sure. um, you, you hear me laughing in the background, you hear me running around. So that's why I do that. But sometimes you can't stand for, you know, an hour. So I do have the toilet chair to sit. No one has ever done it. You can't stand for an hour. It's impossible. Be sure to check out nerdriot.shop where you can always grab the latest and greatest New Rock Series gear. Also, this is a fun fact that a lot of people don't know about. You can also grab our oldest and shittiest New Rock no, Series gear if you're interested in doing that. <laughs> Check out our new line of merch inspired by the news season of Loki, um, including our special Break Room Later Gators shirt, which we don't have. Uh, oh, there's one over there. Um, I'm wearing a shirt that says Mobius's Pies, and I love him. I Someone love him suggested that we get a mannequin for these. What about just, it, I just stand in the background menacingly. <laughs> oh, one whole episode? That's pretty funny. Remember when I said I was taking my pants off? I no, don't my belt. do it. <laughs> well, Chris, and unpronounceable, you made that happen. John took his belt off. Oh, my pants are falling down now. So I would really love to hear from some people that are watching. Send me a tweet, because I don't always see comments. Um, at Con Josta, it's like C-O-H-N. Um, Justa, J O S T A. I want to know what kind of merch you guys want. We're doing um, some really dope shit. We're gonna do some like logo stuff. We're gonna have a uh, trash bag <laughs> shirt, which I'm very excited about. Um, and um, we're gonna have a shirt that's just all made out of human flesh, just for Ryan painting. Um, Whoa. Yeah. Anyways, that's a that's coming up, and we're getting like we're getting really nice shirts for him. Not that these aren't nice, they're very soft and comfortable, but we're getting like thick boy material. It's, it's oh yeah, winter. yeah. All right, so how can Marvel take some of the lessons <laughs> from the past to inform the future? Uh, for Disney Investor Day 2020, uh, Kevin Feige and Kathleen Kennedy were both this pressured is fascinating. into announcing this is projects. Fucking crazy. Yeah, they had to announce projects that were nowhere near ready. That's when Armor Wars was announced as a series. They also announced Fantastic Four back then. Think about that. We've known about Fantastic Four now, since 2020. Do you remember? Was this when they announced John Watts as the director of Fantastic Four, or did that come later? Mm, I think that came later. I think that was separate. Maybe the not. The world will never know. Yeah, yeah. But that was that was like they announced um, Emil Blonsky was coming back for uh, She-Hulk, oh. and that was when the Star Wars side of things were were announcing projects like um, oh, Patty Bro Jenkins' Rogue Squadron, That's which right. doesn't exist anymore. So yeah. it's really interesting to see that like yeah they weren't really ready to announce all these projects and they felt obligated to because they wanted people to get excited about the future of Disney Plus. Yeah, and the truth was um, there was no future. They're just making shit up. And it's kind of interesting because, like, all the, you know, ill will that Star Wars earned for the, the, the sequel trilogy probably worked in their favor to be like, hey, we announced these movies and let's, like, you know, mm. keep slow pedaling it until we, like, get these better TV shows out so now we can earn the goodwill back from the audience so they can get excited for movies again. And we can also then... You know, back then they probably didn't even know what stories they were. They were besides Rogue Squadron. They're just like we have a director and they have a movie and they have a deal for you know that's it. Well, I don't know if Andor was announced during this uh, presentation, but I do know that like Andor was originally conceived very differently, and then they because they had asked Tony Gilroy if he wanted to make this show, and he was like, "No, I'm good." Um, yeah. And then they were like, eh, "That's no problem. We're gonna we'll hire someone else. They'll make it." And so they like wrote an outline or whatever for what they wanted to do for mm -hmm. Andor and they showed it to Gilroy and Gilroy was like don't fucking do this like, fine <laughs> I'll, I'll do the show yeah yeah um, so you know they might not have even had uh, you know their shows might have been very different when they were kind of announcing them yeah that's true and also like so I mean with with that being said like I'm sure Marvel is going to I mean we've also heard 
Joanna Robinson also said that the Wonder Man series is probably canceled. And that yeah, we've heard conflicting stuff about that <laughs> recently because we heard that uh, Joanna Robinson said it's like all the cancel is just a formality at this point. Yeah. But it has it, it shot like half of its episodes before the actor strike. Right. Um, and additionally to that, there was another there was a rumor from a less credible source than Joanna saying like no Wonder Man is still happening because it sets up a couple of other projects down the line. Well, I don't know if you like throw that whole show away just because. Yeah. It's halfway it, shot. I don't know. They're kind of doing that with Daredevil. But also, like, there's obviously much more excitement around Daredevil than there is Wonder Man. Not that I'm, you know, not excited Depends for like. Well, <laughs> I did leave it off many of our Marvel State of the Union episodes. We just forgot. What the fuck? We forgot to talk about Wonder Man. Vision Quest. <laughs> Wonder Man. <laughs> Um, yeah, so, I mean, it... Are there any others? Who knows? Uh, Nova! Nova? <laughs> Dude, they're canceling Nova. There's no way so, Nova is Okay, happening. wait, no, we're There's far no enough way. away from this where I feel like I could talk about it. Like, a year ago, I was talking to someone at Marvel, and they were like, Nova just got a fucking massive episode order. Oh, shit. Um, Animated or live action? It was live action, right? Live action. Holy cow. Um... But now I, do, I generally think it's I think it's I don't I, I don't think it's happening. Yeah. I don't think it's happening. No, no. It's also weird to be like, all right, we got internals. We're we're gonna close Guardians of the Galaxy, which is like a ton of stuff happening in space. But then now we're gonna do Captain Marvel, uh, two or the Marvels, Secret Invasion, which is aliens, but it's not in space, whatever. Uh, and then Nova and Eternals 2, potentially. There's like more space stuff while at the same time focusing on ground level characters, quote unquote, right? Like Sp um, Spider Man, Freshman Year, and Dar bringing back Daredevil. It's like this weird, like, just trying, again, trying to do too much, like over promising, you know? Like they s announced in 2020. Yeah, you know, Eric put out a video a while ago that was like, what the fuck? Why? Like, this wasn't how the pack video was packaged, but it was basically like, why has phase four and five sort of been disappointments? Mm -hmm. And it was like, this this book almost does a great job visually um, representing it, right? These little black things are New Year's, and it's like, okay, this is phase two, this is phase three, and then it's like, get fucked, phase four, there's like 55 fucking projects in a year. And so, like, you know, yeah, there's just more. Yeah. You can't, um, something that I've learned in New Rock Stars is, like, you can't just pump it out yeah. and have it all be great because um, there's too much to worry about. It's just about. too much. Especially, like, they detail the process about how the movies were made, which was, like, they shot the movies, they show them to Feige, and he'd be like, okay, let me, let's do this, this, and this. And so when you hear about, like, reshoots, they kind of phrase it as, like, well, they're more like additional shoots. They're always, like, mm, planned to have... Right. Feige note this stuff, but when it came to TV, all these like junior executives were working on it, and also none of those things were going to Feige as well. So it's this thing where it is like you have this kind of cr like clearly a creative vision from him to lead this into something, but when it's starting to be more and more and more and it's like more disparate properties, it is harder to have that kind of oversight and that kind of like general quality like assurance across the board of what they have. Um, yeah, and, and then there's other things that happen, like, you know, one of your principals passing away from cancer, which right. is, like, really devastating, and I, that has changed the course of Phase 4 and 5. There's a reporting in this book that, like, Brie Larson, Tom Holland, and Chadwick Boseman were, like, hanging out on the set of Endgame, and they were just sort of, sort of like, you know, chatting to themselves about how they were kind of the young, up-and-coming faces of the MCU, and they were going to, you know... Uh, be basically the the like anchors mm -hmm. to different parts of the MCU world. Yeah. Um, and that's really difficult, right? You 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 lose that. You lose Chadwick Boseman. Uh, Spider Man is a property owned by another company, so you don't have perfect control over that. I think this is detailed in this book, but it, it might have been sourced from somewhere else that that. Marvel really wanted to use Craven as the villain for No yeah. Way Home, or what ended up becoming No Way Home, <clears throat> and Sony was like, no, we want to make this uh, Aaron Taylor Johnson movie, mm -hmm. um, so you can't use that character. So it's like, Marvel has to, uh, and I you know, love the movie that we ended up getting, it's probably yeah. better uh, for it, but you know, Marvel all, can't do whatever they want to, mm -hmm. um, which, is, which is too bad. I was saying to Evan, like, 
if, <laughs> if you're Sony and you're smart, you say like, great, yeah, go make that movie and use Craven as the villain, but can you please keep him alive so that we can make a solo movie and then more people want to go see that movie. <laughs> if you had introduced Morbius in a MCU movie, yeah. more people would have seen that movie. Oh, 100%. Still yeah. a terrible movie, people would have gone and seen it. Yeah, and also like off that too, like we're seeing, you know, there was that big announcement last week about how Marvel's going to change the process for their TV shows, yeah. and the analogy that the book uses that and um, is that when they're making the TV shows, it's like each creator has their own like train car to decorate, and they don't they don't get to see what any of the other train cars look like, and sometimes someone comes in and says you can't do that or you can't use that, and they don't get told why. So they have to submit character requests yeah, for yeah. every character that they want to use tertiary or otherwise like mm -hmm. um what's a good example of this like oh we were saying leapfrog from yeah. she hulk like that would be a character i don't have this you know confirmed or anything but like that would be a character that they would have to literally ask if they could use yeah um, and also joanna robinson i think on the watch was saying that uh, Darcy was that for WandaVision. It's like, oh, oh yeah, we, need a, we need a scientist character. And it's like, well, you could pull Darcy, who is a scientist, right? Which obviously ended up being a net positive, but yeah. I think it is maybe leading to like diminishing returns, right? As we've like the MCU is aging up and all or, that. Or, you know, it's a little bit of a benefit because one of the things that I was thinking about when watching uh, Ahsoka. Mm -hmm. was in that episode five episode where they're in the world between worlds and they're doing all the flashback stuff or not quite flashbacks but you know what i mean um i thought all that storytelling was like really impactful yeah and i um you know i'm growing a, a fondness for the prequels but like again they're still not my favorite movies in the, in the whole wide world but you know uh hayden christensen's anakin has been kind of redeemed in subsequent mm -hmm. projects so like thor the dark world they've kind of gone back to that movie and pulled things out of it that they wanted to use yeah and like that makes that movie almost better now yeah yeah so percent. when you have a character like darcy and you want to pull him from you know a movie that came out a decade ago mm -hmm. i don't know i think it may, maybe just like adds context to the previous things that they've been in maybe makes them a little bit more impactful yeah that makes sense yeah um all right, the last thing we'll say here, and then we'll get to some chat stuff, is that this is a rumor that's been going around, and Joanna Robinson kind of echoed it, but she believes that Secret Wars will be a reboot for the MCU. Kind of makes sense based on, like, the comic origins, but also it makes sense just as, you know, we've seen the last couple of years have gone, um, Marvel has really built, you know, a fandom around certain characters, and if those certain characters have left, it's harder to bring more obscure characters to get like the general public interested like people who are fans of marvel and people who are fans of the comics will show up for things that they're interested in like i personally was very interested for moon knight but as i was like talking to people a ton of like more casual fans were just like what the heck is a moon knight you right. know um what? so yeah and i don't remember where i heard this or if i'm making it all up um <laughs> well, whoops um but this whole thing Thing with the soft reboot is basically like uh, I think I was I think this was reported um, it allowed Marvel to just sort of like do uh, take bigger risks in mm -hmm. phases four and five because you could basically just say like oh I did we people that didn't connect with people we're gonna leave that behind yeah and like this did resonate with people so we're gonna you know move that forward if you think about like a movie like Shang-Chi Right, not a character that a ton of people are familiar with. That's probably a big risk that Marvel feels like they're taking. You know, you, you can't like sell a movie um, based on the lead because Simu wasn't a super well known actor at that point. Mm -hmm. You can't sell it based on the character because that character wasn't super well known. But a movie fucking slaps, yeah. and people really connected with Simu's portrayal. And like, so that's one of those things where they, I'm sure they were like, oh, this is kind of a risk, and. It worked out and we can take that with us mm -hmm. whereas something like you know secret invasion maybe they decide like oh we don't want to take gaia with us to phase seven or you know whatever it is yeah yeah that's true if you tune in live on twitch we do these we answer chat questions afterwards so uh you know feel free to check our twitch channel at break room nr 3 p.m weekdays uh 3 p.m pacific time we're doing something a little wacky tomorrow 
Yeah, um, it's wacky. Since we have Inside Marvel, that's going to come out after Loki. Loki. So that'll be an evening thing. We're not going to stream that because it, the episode will not be out when we normally stream. So what we're going to do instead is, happy fucking Halloween, we're going to look <laughs> at some Treehouse of Horror Simpsons episodes with some big Simpsons fanatics, which is like... One of the things, one of the first things I did when I started working at New Rockstars was I tried to sneak a SpongeBob joke into a video, and Eric <laughs> noted it, and that's why I learned that Eric is a, is not a SpongeBob person; he's a Simpsons person. Uh, and it made me very sad, yeah, because um, I I'm a SpongeBob person. And yeah, I, I don't know Same. why I'm putting them together; they're both yellow. Um, <laughs> I don't know. That's um, how it is. <laughs> uh, but we have some some big Simpsons fans in the office, so yeah. we're gonna do like a live breakdown of some is it the most recent episode or just some uh trios part is five which i think is one of the, like the more okay. like legendary cool. ones yeah so tune in for so that. that then we have inside marvel coming out that night then on friday what a fucking day friday is gonna be it's gonna go so hard spider-man 2 the video game is coming out um we have some friends who have played it already but we're gonna play it um as as mid for as many hours as we can on Friday, and then at three o'clock, we're going to be talking more about Loki episode three. We might do some other stuff on stream. Feel free to hop in, tune in, tune out, and then you know we'll talk about lingering questions from Loki episode at three p.m. So and then it's the weekend. Leave us alone. Yeah, okay. just just to, uh, tweet at John on all your break room merch ideas. Okay. At Break Room NR on Twitch, Instagram, and Twitter slash X. You can also tweet at us uh, your merch ideas. Follow us on Instagram because Evan's truly posting some unhinged shit on her. Instagram. I'm very annoying on Instagram. I've watched the follower count go down, <laughs> but then I watch it go up after these streams and it's pretty great. Uh, so as we say at the end of every Break Room episode. We have spoken. We have spoken. <laughs>